this residence. One person killed, two others hurt. Now deputies are trying to piece together what happened. We want to make sure that you know, our neighborhoods are safe, our streets are safe, and, and our, our residents are safe. Plus, charges are filed against a mother and her boyfriend in a deadly pit bull attack. And the Broncos are a mess. They're on a four game losing streak. They can't score on offense, and somehow they need to regroup to have a trip to London. We have to get on a run at some point, and we need to get on that run. We need to start winning some football games. A house party turns deadly in Adams County. Three people are shot at a home near 70th and Broadway over the weekend. One of the victims died and now deputies are trying to piece together what happened. Denver 7's Christian Lopez joins us live where deputies are still on scene, still combing through evidence. We want to show you what the crime scene looks like more than 36 hours later. You can see that tape is still up and we've seen three sheriff's deputies blocking off the area. They tell me it's going to stay this way for the at least the next day or two. This is near 70th and Broadway. You can see it's a pretty busy intersection. Officials say that this party was just so big. They have so much evidence to still go through. This party, you know, from what we could gather, there was anywhere from 100 to 200 people. Um, on this property uh, at this residence. A night of Halloween fun turned to horror in Adams County early Sunday. So that's 100, 200 people that we need to either identify, eliminate as possible suspects, or identify as persons of interest. Police say they're taking their time, especially because one person was killed, two others injured. A lengthy investigation isn't without its impacts to nearby businesses like this liquor store. Of course, you know, you know every day there is a bill, you know, we have to pay and then we have a customers and then they are expecting us to open and then uh, they miss the, their service and then uh, our income too. Adams County officials confirmed the home was listed on Airbnb. The party spread through social media. We've had two in a row um, the last two weekends of, of similar style parties that and then during these parties we're, we're having um, shootings. Officials still haven't said who hosted the party. It is a warning for anyone looking at plans for the upcoming Halloween weekend. If they are seeing these advertised parties to definitely make sure if they are interested in attending to really ask questions for, for from those they're getting the information from so they can find out, you know, what might happen at this party, who may be attending. And we're still working to learn the name of the victim. So far, no suspects have been identified. Officials in Adams County are asking anyone with information to contact them. We're live in Adams County. I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. Still so many questions out there, Christian. Thank you. Now, police are also trying to figure out what happened at a different house party shooting, also in Adams County. This one happened last Saturday. A senior at Denver North High School was killed and seven other people were hurt. And in Denver, one man was killed and two women were hurt in a shooting at a house party not far from Ruby Hill. This one happened Saturday night near Florida and Zuni. Police haven't made any arrests. Charges have been filed against the owners of two pit bulls that attacked a grandmother and her 12-year-old great-grandson. Kayla Mooney and her boyfriend Victor Bentley are facing a combined six counts of unlawful ownership of a dangerous dog. Mooney's 88-year-old grandmother died and Mooney's son was seriously hurt in the attack. Both dogs were euthanized. You can weigh in on Denver's budget for next year at the city council meeting tonight. The budget is close to $4 billion. It sets aside more money for police and fire, trash collection, DIA, and libraries. I got to tell you, working with city council has been a collaborative effort. It's been a good effort. Uh, $17 million request on top of a $3.3 billion budget. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we basically had a deal, and I'm, I'm proud to say that uh, this is, it works in Denver. Working together on budget works, and uh, I think we'll have a successful patch of bill come mid-November. Yeah. That was Denver Mayor Michael Hancock. The city council meeting starts in about a half an hour at 530. Meanwhile, Aurora's city council is set to vote tonight on a $50 million plan to try to address homelessness. Mayor Mike Kaufman's plan calls for a 22 acre campus providing homeless services at 32nd and Chambers. Emergency housing would be available to everyone temporarily. People would need to agree to things like job training and staying off of drugs to get long term help. Look, we're going to take care of everybody in terms of their basic needs that are experiencing homelessness by providing them uh, basic emergency services. But we're going to concentrate our, our resources on, on the people that want to change their behavior. 
Kaufman is basing the plan on information gathered during recent visits to homeless campuses in Colorado Springs and in Texas. Oh, well, it was another tough Sunday for Broncos country. The Broncos had trouble on offense again and lost 16 to 9 against the New York Jets. They're now 2 and 5 on the season, have lost four straight, and now head to London to take on the Jaguars on Sunday. So, Denver 7 Sports Director Lionel Bienvenu joins us now. Lionel, there's got to be big changes in the works, right, to turn this thing around. You would think, huh? No, no changes, Jason. <laughs> Head coach Nathaniel Hackett said today it's status quo for the week. And that really is the definition of insanity at this point. For a team on a four-game losing streak, averaging 14 points a game, the worst scoring team in the NFL, status quo. Who needs a change? As the Broncos boarded the plane to London today, Hackett said they will just keep evaluating and trying to get better. He also said Russell Wilson is day-to-day, -day, and they'll know more when they start practicing on Wednesday. Now, our Broncos decided to try rank on, on his way to London as well. He said a big change could come next week. That's during the bye week. If the Broncos lose to the Jags, look for Hackett to maybe give up calling the offensive plays and quarterback coach Clint Kubiak to take over. Also, next Tuesday is the trade deadline. Troy says Bradley Chubb, K.J. Hamler, and Jerry Judy. All could be on the block. If the Broncos are going nowhere this season, then they need to build for the future. Hackett told us today he is not thinking about any of that. All that matters is beating the Jags Sunday in London. I'm looking forward to winning a football game this week in London. Uh, that's what we're, our focus is on, and, and these guys are all on our team, and I love them. They've worked so hard and uh, appreciate all of them and want them here. Um, but, I, you know, George handles that side. We'll communicate. We'll talk. Uh, but I'm very excited for these guys and ha having another opportunity to go win a game. All right, so to recap, no changes this week, but could be a fire sale next week with more changes to Hackett's authority as head coach. They already hired a coach to help him coach, and here we are, two and five. So like the leaves and temperatures, changes could be coming with another loss. Well, hopefully something changes. Thank you, Lionel. Well, Denver 7's Nick Rothschild and our Broncos insider Troy Rank will be in London for the Broncos-Jags game on Sunday. So look for their reports later on this week. Denver 7 is your home for the Broncos game in London. Our pregame show starts at 7 in the morning. Kickoff is at 7.30 and after the game, stick around for our postgame show. He was very uh, friendly. He seemed knowledgeable. He seemed like the right person. A Colorado woman hires a contractor on next door. She doesn't get what she paid for and is left with a giant hole in her backyard. Totally ghosted me for, I would say, close to five or six months. She says she was ripped off, losing thousands of dollars until Contact Denver 7 started making calls. We have another chilly night ahead, and there's a chance of snow in the seven-day forecast. And CPW is reminding people to be cautious with their holiday decorations.